Hi guys, this is Johannes Sich. I'm the designer of La Cosa Nostra and I'm going to explain you the setup, the basic rules and the gameplay. Have fun! La Cosa Nostra is a game for three to five players and the game takes between one and a half to two and a half hours, depending on the number of players. Each player acts as the boss of a mafia family and their goal is to have the most money at the end of the game. The game consists of 196 cards, money, dice, two card mats and the deal markers. So let's set up the game. First place the two card mats in the center of the table. On the mats place the different types of cards as indicated. Starting with the job cards, sort them into four stacks, each one for one round of the game and place them on the mat. Then take the influence cards. Every player starts with specific influence cards. This starter set consists of a snitch, a schemer and a henchman. Shuffle the remaining influence cards and place them on the spot indicated on the mat. Money is sorted and placed next to the mat for easy access. Finally, place the monopoly cards on the respective space on the mat. Each player chooses a boss card and takes their respective color. It's recommended that in the very first game, three players should use the colors yellow, red and green. In this example we will have three players, so the colors yellow, green and red are chosen. In this tutorial I will be playing green. And so I take the six green gangster cards that will work for me. Only three of the six gangsters are available at the start of the game. They are labeled start gangster. These start gangsters are placed in a row next to our boss card. The boss card itself functions only as a reminder of your starting businesses and as a cover sheet for your remaining gangsters. These gangsters can be hired over the course of the game to increase your power. Because the more gangsters you control, the more actions you can do in one round. Next, every player will get their business cards, as indicated in the rulebook or on the back of the boss cards. As player green, I get a drug dealer, a lawyer and a construction company. These are two types of business cards in the game. Firstly, there are the businessman, like the drug dealer or the lawyer. Secondly, there are companies, like the construction company. Companies have a higher income than businessmen. The white number on the right shows you the income of a business card. This is the amount of money you could earn in one round with this card. The purchase price of a company is higher as well. You can find the purchase price in small print on the card. It is twice the amount of the income. Another difference between the two types of business cards is in the lower security of a businessman compared with a company. Businessmen could be poached, beaten or killed. Companies are relatively safe, although companies could be blown up. But this will happen later in the game and it won't happen very often. The remaining business cards are shuffled and placed on the mat. Four business cards are placed face up on the market. Finally, every player takes their deal markers and $2000 as starting money. Now the game can begin. So here we go. La Cosa Nostra is played over four game rounds, as can be seen on the four stacks of job cards, one for each round. The player with the most money at the end of the game wins. Every round consists of the following phases. Card drawing, planning phase, action phase and finally payday. So let's begin the drawing card phase. At first every player takes job cards. Since it is the first round, each player gets four job cards from stack number one. Now the planning phase. In this phase, every player decides which actions they want their gangsters to do. I am the starting player. So let's see what cards I drew. I drew three attacks and one cash job. Cash jobs are needed to earn money, while attacks can be used to hinder other players. This is quite unusual, because there are more cash jobs than attacks in the first job deck. But I will try to use the situation to my advantage. Every action we want to do has to be done by one of our gangsters. As the starting player I will have to give the first job to one of my gangsters. I take a job card from my hand and place it face down on one of my gangsters. 
Now it's the next player's turn. On your turn you always have to give a job to one of your gangsters. Each player assigns one of their gangsters in turn. Once this has happened, it is again my turn to assign a second gangster. I could assign one of our gangsters with a job card from the hand, like I have done last turn, or I could have him purchase a business card. There are always four business cards available on the market. On this turn I want to buy the drug dealer. I take the card from the market and put it on one of our gangsters. So it is on Phil Maloney to try to hire a new drug dealer for our organization. As this is the planning phase, I do not pay the purchase price right now. I will pay during the action phase when the plan is carried out. Also, with my current available money, I would not be able to pay for the dealer anyway. The market is replenished and it is the next player's turn. Player yellow puts a new job on his gangster and player red does the same. And now it is my turn again. I will give my last gangster a cash job. Therefore I give him investment fraud, which will hopefully earn me a little bit of money. Most cash jobs will have some requirements to fulfill. The investment fraud, for example, requires a lawyer and a loan shark. I own a lawyer, but I'm short one loan shark. If I had both, I could do this job on my own, but now I will have to work together with another player. I check the available businessman and I see that my good friend, Player Yellow, also known as Silvio Blandetto, owns a loan shark. Now I have to cooperate with Silvio, otherwise I will not be able to complete my investment fraud. I'm gonna ask Silvio. Dear Silvio, I am planning something and I would like to use your loan shark. I would give you my $2000 now to use him for this job. These deals are freely negotiable. Today, Silvio is nice and responds, go ahead, I'll take you $2,000 now and you can use my loan shark. The deal is sealed by putting one of my green deal markers on the loan shark. When the deal marker is placed on a business card, it becomes a binding contract and it will stay there until I've used this business card in a job. Other promises with terms in the future are not binding. For example, we could offer this deal. Silvio, if the job is successful, you will get $5,000 for letting me use your loan shark. Although the deal marker would be placed on the loan shark, if Silvio agrees, I do not have to give Silvio the money later. The safest thing is always cash in advance. I have planned my job and the round continues clockwise. The yellow player plans a purchase and the red player places a third job card. Now all gangsters on the table are assigned and the planning phase is over. After the planning phase we continue with the action phase, where the plans will be executed. As the star player I decide which of our gangsters will be first. Therefore I choose the investment fraud, because we need some money. This job requires a lawyer and a loan shark. I own a lawyer and I also have access to a loan shark through the deal I made with Yellow. This deal is now going to be redeemed. I take back the deal marker and I try to execute the job. The dice will decide if the job is going to be a success or not. I take as many dice as my gangster has pistol symbols. They indicate the strength of the gangster. The stronger a gangster, the higher the possibility of success. You can find the minimum pips I have to roll for the success on the job card. In this case I have to roll threes. Each die counts separately, so each die showing a three or more is a success. Because of my strength 2 gangster, I am going to roll two dice. They show a three and a five. So both dice are successful and I can take the $9,000. If I rolled only one success, I would have earned only $7,000. Without any success, I would have earned nothing. No matter the result, the job has been executed and the card is put back on the job pile for the first round. Now it's the other player's turn. Yellow and red. Every player makes an action, then it is my turn again and I can do a second action. This time I have enough money to carry out the purchase. Now I pay the purchase price of $4,000 to the bank. 
and place the drug dealer with my other business cards. Yellow plays a purchase as well, he buys another loan shark. Red performs another action. Now it's my turn again and I execute our third and last job, a theft. A theft is an attack card. On these types of cards, the victim is shown as well as the consequence. Again, the dice will decide if I'm successful or not. In this case, one player has to give me $6,000 if I roll two successes, or only $3,000 with only one success. I have to choose the target before I show the card to the other players. I announce, I play a theft against player red. I then show the card to the other players and roll the dice. I have to roll four pips or higher and I have three dice. Because this attack is difficult, I gave this job to my strongest gangster during the planning phase. Sadly, only one die is a success, so I only get $3000 from the red player. Then it's yellow's and red's turn to carry out one job. Once all gangsters have performed their actions, the action phase is over. The last phase of the round is Payday. During Payday, every player earns money, according to their business cards and possible monopolies. There are three monopoly cards. Credit for most loan sharks, drugs for most drug dealers and prostitution for most pimps. If I have a monopoly, I get $5000 extra income. To get a monopoly, I need at least two of those businessmen of the same kind and I need to also have the absolute majority. For example, I have two drug dealers and only player yellow has one drug dealer, therefore I have the monopoly on drug dealing. If in our example red or yellow hires another drug dealer, I lose absolute majority and therefore the monopoly, as it would be now two against two. Player yellow also has a monopoly. He owns two loan sharks and there are no other loan sharks owned by other players. Therefore he gets the monopoly credit. There is only one pimp owned by red. But with only one pimp you do not get the monopoly. So let's count our earning money. We get 5, 7, 9, 10, 14, 14,000 dollars. Now every player has the possibility to hire one additional gangster. I buy the gangster with strength 3 and I have to pay 15,000 dollars. Costs are indicated on the card. If you have enough money, it is normally a good idea to buy an additional gangster, so that you can get an additional action for the next rounds. The next player at the table in a clockwise direction now becomes the starting player. As per the table in the instructions, all the players will get 4 new job cards from stack number 2. Cards from previous rounds can stay in our hands. Additionally, every player draws 2 new influence cards. The influence cards are not that important at the beginning of the game, but will become more interesting later on. I will explain them in a separate video. The next three rounds will follow the same phases, and job cards will become stronger every round. Cash jobs will become more lucrative and more difficult to perform, and the attacks will become more brutal. Also rounds will take longer, as every player has more gangsters and therefore more actions per round. So this was our video to introduce you to La Cosa Nostra and give you a brief overview of the gameplay. In another video I am going to explain the influence cards and talk about a few tactics. Thank you for watching.